Hello, I hope you're doing fantastic. Thanks for joining me. So in this video, we are going to talk about the parts that you'll need to complete this Arduino crash course. You probably have a lot of this stuff already laying around. Maybe you don't. It just depends on how much you've been into electronics thus far. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. The first thing you're going to need is an Arduino Uno. Now, as you may or may not know, Arduino has all types of derivatives out there. So there's this company named Arduino. They made this board, the Arduino board, right? And that is like the official Arduino. But Arduino is open source hardware. And so basically this company, Arduino, they made all of the schematics and everything publicly available. So anybody could take that stuff and replicate it, make changes, replicate it, and they could legally sell it. So there's all these derivatives out there or clones of an Arduino Uno board that are basically the exact same thing as your Arduino Uno. Maybe like one or two things are different. But my recommendation to you, and again, this is a recommendation, my recommendation is that you get an actual authentic Arduino Uno to work through the course with. And the reason I say to go with an Arduino Uno, an authentic one, is because basically it washes away any concern you might have whether or not you're following the tutorial correctly. So if you're following everything we're doing here, then you can know, hey, well, it's not the hardware I've got because it's the same stuff that's being used in the course. All right, so again, that's just my opinion. You know, if you've already got an Arduino clone or derivative, feel free to use it. It'll probably work just fine. So the next thing you'll need is a USB cable to plug your Arduino into your computer. Basically how it's going to work, you're going to write code on your computer and then you're going to transfer that code, you're going to upload it to the Arduino board. So this USB cable that you're going to use, it's called an AB type. So one end looks like your typical USB that just plugs into a computer and the other end is kind of like square, it looks like a little house maybe, and it's what would typically go into the back of a printer. Next, you're going to want to get some light emitting diodes or LEDs. The 5 millimeter type, type or kind of the size that you're going to be looking for and you're going to want about 10 of them. 10 would be good. Any color, like I said, is fine. I'm usually using red or white. You'll also need some resistors. So what resistors do is they resist the flow of current in a circuit. And the bigger the number is for the resistor, the more current that they resist. Now, when a resistor resists current, the resistor takes that electrical energy and it basically transforms it into heat energy. All right, so sometimes resistors can be hot. So that's just a quick mental note. Um, when you're setting up circuits and stuff, resistors will get a little warm. For the stuff we're doing, you probably won't even notice it, but just in general. Okay, so you're going to want to get 10 220 ohm resistors. And then you're going to want to get two 10,000 ohm resistors or 10K ohm resistors. You're also going to want to get a potentiometer. Now, really, it actually doesn't matter what size potentiometer you get. I'm going to be using a 10K potentiometer, but you could get a 1K, whatever. It really doesn't matter. What a potentiometer does is it's just like a resistor, really, but it's a variable resistor. And what it allows you to do is create this thing called a voltage divider. We won't get into that now. Just know that you need to get a potentiometer. The next thing you'll want to have is a solderless breadboard. We're not going to be cutting bread on this breadboard, but as the name implies, we don't have to use solder in order to connect electrical components together. So the solderless breadboard, it has a bunch of little holes in it, and in the holes are all these little clips, all these little metal copper clips down below each hole. You can think of a breadboard, a solderless breadboard, as being divided into columns and into rows. And the columns are electrically connected, but the rows are not electrically connected. So what this allows you to do is to stick electric components you know, like the little, they're called leads off of like a resistor or an LED or the potentiometer to kind of stick them in, the, in there to make circuits, basically. It's really quick. It's pretty easy to do. For prototyping like we're going to be doing, it's a great tool. Okay, so you're also going to need some jumper wires. And what jumper wires allow you to do is they fit down into the little holes on a breadboard and also into the the little holes on your Arduino board, and we'll be talking about the Arduino board more. Those are called the headers. Anyway, so the jumper wires are going to allow you to basically extend your electrical connections, give you some space to work with. And you'll again, you'll want 12 of those. You'll also want to get two momentary push buttons. So a momentary push button is normally off. So that means if you're not pressing the button, then no electrical connection is made between either side of the button. But when you press the button, when you're actually holding it down, that's when an electrical connection can be made. And if you remove your hand, if you remove your finger from that button, then the button kind of pops back out. 
and again, the electrical connection would be lost. They come in all different styles, but if you follow the links below, you'll get an idea of what you're looking for. Finally, you'll probably want to get some alligator clips. So the alligator clips, you know, you can pretend it's a little alligator or whatever, but it helps you to connect leads together if for some reason it's inconvenient to do it on the solderless breadboard. So as far as the needed hardware for the course, that's it. Really doesn't cost that much. There's also a couple other things you'll need though. So I'm assuming that you have a computer that's going to be running Windows, Mac, some type of Mac software, or Linux. So you'll need that, and then you're going to need an inter internet connection because you'll have to download the Arduino software. And we'll go into that later, but those are obviously things you need. Now, some things you might want to get, you know, if you're already going to buy that stuff, some things you might consider getting that would be fun to experiment. We don't cover it in the crash course, but something like a photoresistor, maybe some additional potentiometers. It's kind of neat to get a RGB LED. That's a red, green, blue LED. It's kind of all in one. Those are neat. You might want to get a temperature sensor or something like that. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. There is one more thing that you need for the Arduino crash course. It's not an optional thing. You definitely want to have this. It's two or three chicken feet. And you can use those to scratch the back of the Arduino if we get any error messages and we're not sure why they're happening. All right. Well, hey, that's it for the stuff you're going to need in the course. Again, the parts list is below. Look forward to jumping into the course. All right. See you in the next video. Bye.